Welcome to the video lecture series on contact mechanics in the course M7033T Scientific Computing with Applications in Tribology. My name is Andreas Almquist and I work in the Division of Machine Elements here at Luleå University of Technology. This is the third part which deals with the discrete Fourier transformation and Fourier differentiation of the fourth video lecture on the application of Fourier techniques and multi-level multi-integration in the video lecture series on contact mechanics. In this part we will first have a recap of the discrete Fourier transformation and then apply this to do uh, the derivatives of functions in an accurate and efficient way. So before proceeding into making use of the Fourier transformation to, to carry out differentiation and solve convolutions, we have a short recap on, on what the exact properties of the discrete Fourier transformation here. So we have already used uh, uh, different definitions of the Fourier transformation and here is yet another one and this is one that you can really find in MATLAB and uh, uh, if you have this one uh, as a DFT then, then in MATLAB the, the inverse DFT will look like this and as we have already also seen if we plug in a sin pure sinusoidal uh, component with a certain uh, discrete frequency wave number M here it will produce a, an imaginary part of its Fourier transform being just a really one value function um, looking like the one in the figure over here. If we normalize it, it, will, it will, and, and if we normalize it with n half, it will actually be exactly minus i and i and zero otherwise. So the concept of FFT, so we have the fast discrete Fourier transforms, the F is just for fast. And it replaces discrete wherever the symmetries of the DFT are considered and utilized to make a fast evaluation. And the beauty of this is that we can reduce the complexity to n log n. Now, uh, here you have a uh, pseudo code for a radix 2 algorithm example. And I show this because this is how. Uh, typically the, the FFT algorithms are built and you can find a lot more on what is referred to uh, the, is the cooley Tukey uh, algorithm at the link I provide down here. Okay, so with this let's move on. Fourier differentiation. Okay, we know that if we have a, a continuous Fourier transformation of a function uh, and times it with i omega, we actually have the Fourier transformation of the derivative of that function. And by this, we can of course obtain the derivative of the function f of x by taking the inverse transformation of i omega times the Fourier transformation of the function. So let's make these two definitions. We have f of omega, which is just a Fourier transformation of the function fx in omega. And we have g omega, which is the Fourier transformation of the function, the function fx derivative f prime x in omega. Then we have continuous transfer function definition here. So transfer function h of omega in this case will be just i omega. We can have a discrete representation of this one in terms of discrete frequencies omega k. Okay, combine these two, we can write the derivative of the Fourier transformation of the derivative as the transfer function times the Fourier transformation of the function itself. In this terminology, 
we had Fourier, uh, we had the, um, sorry, I completely lost it here, we had the uh, derivative of the function fx equal to the inverse transformation of g of omega in x, and that is exactly as the inverse transformation of the transfer function times the, the Fourier transformation of the function itself, evaluated in x. An example. Now, let us consider a function sine for x with very few discrete nodes to represent uh, this function. It looks like this. So what we have is actually eight nodes per wavelength. We carry out the DFT. Uh, we get the imaginary part of the Fourier transformation looking like this, you're not familiar with. Then we, we can also define g omega now, which is i omega times f omega, and g omega is the Fourier transformation of the derivative of the function f, and the derivative of the function f is nothing but 4 cos 4x, okay? And now, for the cosinusoidal uh, Fourier transformation, or the Fourier transformation of a cosinusoidal function, it is only a real, it has only a real part, so, and this is exactly the real part we see here. Well, we don't see exactly how high those, uh, those uh, non zero values are, but schematically they do look like this and we can we, we can find out exactly how large they are. Okay, now if we perform the inverse DFT of this uh, Fourier transformed signal, we obtain exactly 4 cos x with the FFT and it's numerically exact. Now let's compare this with uh, a finite difference method. Okay, now we have a very large h, which is in this case the step size. So of course it will be pretty inaccurate, but still it is not that bad. But there is a difference, and the difference is that the DFT is numerically exact. It is 4 cos 4x evaluated in, in those discretized nodes, but the finite difference method does not give us a, a numerically exact result. And this is clearly seen here. Now, in MATLAB, there is a shift involved in the frequency space representation of the Fourier transform, or the discrete Fourier transformation. So I think it's easiest to explain with, a, with some quite concrete examples. So let now, uh, let now us have capital F being the, the Fourier, first Fourier transform, the discrete Fourier transform of the fu function F or the, the discretized signal F. It's just a one-dimensional array and it has length n, then the output will also have length n, but it will be in a swapped order. So the order will look like this in terms of frequencies. So it will be swapped in relative to the naturally ordered frequencies, which would be going from minus n half up to n half minus 1. Now look at the swapped order. What we see there is that we have the positive frequency part here and then we have the negative frequency part after this. Now this means that the results of a MATLAB's FFT function they should be reordered to be naturally ordered. And it's easily achieved, of course, just by puzzling around with the, with, with the vector you have, or matrix if it's 2D, but uh, 
is also a built there is also a built-in function called FFT shift to be used in case you would like to perform this reordering. And there is also an inverse FFT shift because it's required when when you perform the inverse FFT if you want it to, to if you want to present it in natural order. So the IFFT function it expects the input to be swapped in MATLAB. So performing the FFT in MATLAB, F will have the swapped order, capital F, the Fourier transform, will have the swapped order. And therefore, uh, if we now make IFFT of F, we will get a lower letter, the function, the, the, the original uh, uh, discrete signal back. And that means that the IFT function also expects its input, uh, inputs to be swapped. And this can be seen if you perform uh, the operation exactly presented here. It will be an uh, original result. So, the function f of t shift, it sort of unswaps, if you like, an array. So it makes it uh, shifts it to natural order and the inverse function uh, and the inverse function i f of t shift so there is an inverse f of t shift function which swaps one so if you have something in natural order you can swap it swap it to the swapped matlab order by i f of t shift so we use an i f of t shift before an IFFT in the case where the input spectrum is not the result of a MATLAB FFT but it's natural order. So for example G equal IFFT of IFFT shift of G. I think it's time for a practical example. So let's use same type of, of uh, lead-in as before we define the function f equals sine 4 omega x and this omega is just here to have it on the periodic window from 0 to 1 instead of to 2 pi and with this we know that the, the derivative of the function is a 4 omega cos 4 omega x what is important to remember is that we need to define the function on the periodic window only. So we disregard the last node, which is just the repetition of the zero node, so to speak. Then we can construct the transfer function i omega, and we do that so that we get the the relationship between the Fourier transform, the transfer function, and, and the Fourier transform of the uh, original signal. And uh, this is uh, done in natural order, order, like this. So we just go from minus n half to n half minus 1. And the reason I had I did not have to separate this into two parts, but I will do that so it's more easily compared to uh, the the swapped order later on. But you you realize I hope you realize that you could have just the colon operator minus one and colon operator again and go all the way to n half minus one without adding this comma and zero in between. So this is the natural order. And then uh, we do this, you remember, because that uh, with this, for example, we, we represent exactly the, the transfer function for, for, a, for any uh, sinusoid or cosinusoid, but in, in this figure I have a sinusoid example, for, for any such one uh, with a wave number n. In this case n is 4, it's displayed with n4, but if you have a 
combination, a function which is a combination of many of n's, uh, natural frequency, or hmm, not natural frequencies, but wave numbers, discrete frequencies, then we will have the correct transfer function to, uh, to render the, the, the Fourier transformation of the derivative of the function itself in this way. What we now need to do is to get it into MATLAB's order and we use FFT shift to swap it there. So HNS is just the FFT shift of HN. Or we can alternatively do this directly by just uh, constructing the transfer function in swapped order at once. And now if you take a careful look at this definition. You can see the second zero here in the middle. It is actually not found in the natural order, uh, F, uh, natural ordering of the transfer function. Uh, the reason for me highlighting this is that the, the second zero in this array is put exactly where the Nyquist frequency is. So uh, we could have had uh, n half here, which is the Nyquist frequency, but we instead we choose to have zero, and it will not make a difference at all when we perform these operations because it's left out, it's it's uh, truncated over there, so it doesn't matter. So at this point, we have the constituents to compute by means of uh, this Fourier uh, transformation routine, the derivative of the function fx. And when we do this with the uh, naturally ordered and then swapped uh, the transfer function, we multiply this HNS with pointwise with the FFT of the original signal f. We take the IFFT of this one and then we use real to just remove the imaginary noise that may have uh, occurred when we did when we did it and we can compute an error and we can see the error the difference between this uh, result that we obtained by means of Fourier differentiation and the analytical result uh, fx is at the order of machine epsilon. So we could, okay, of course, we could make use of the alternatively directly defined uh, transfer function. Uh, and I, I illustrate, I, I do this now just to ensure you that the zero or n half, if you like, in the, in the middle there of h, it doesn't matter because, because because the accuracy will be the same and we will have a numerical res uh, exact result anyway. So this is what it would look like if we plotted the functions. fx, which is the analytical function, uh, analytical derivative, and fxn, which is the derivative that we obtain by means of Fourier differentiation. Be aware. Uh, for the FFT differentiation to render a good result, non-erroneous, uh, then we have to filter the signal via a Fourier series. So I illustrate this also with an example. So let's say we add some noise, non-harmonic content to a signal, we get new signal G, F is the uh, previous, uh, the, the, what we had previously, then if we perform now Fourier differentiation, and uh, we denote this by gx fft, we will see uh, the problem uh, resulting from aliasing, uh, which is not seen in the finite difference method of the same signal. But if we would have filtered it via Fourier series, we would have obtained the numerically exact 
uh, result by the Fourier, uh, the, fa the fast Fourier transform differentiation, but that we wouldn't have done with the finite difference method. So as long as we filter the signal via Fourier series, it is really, really highly accurate differentiation uh, to do by means of FFT. And here is a, just a uh, highlight of, of uh, this aliasing error and how it comes about. So it, it um, generates a ripple coming from, from uh, uh, the boundary here, which is apparently uh, not uh, enough periodic considered. It's a big step here in, in between the zero and the one side of this of in this signal and therefore we get this uh, in, in induced uh, ripple because we cannot resolve it properly that big step it's a too fast uh, too fast step occurring in the uh, in the periodic ends huh?